Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Now, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah came out in Japan in 1991. However, this wasn't released in the States until the late 90s, and it was released straight to video here in the States. Now, this is the 18th film in the Godzilla franchise, and it's the third film of the Heisei Godzilla series. Now, the Heisei Godzilla series started with 1984's The Return of Godzilla, or Godzilla 1985, as it was known here in the States. Now, that film was a reboot of the Godzilla franchise and a direct sequel to the original Godzilla, ignoring the continuity of all the films in between. So this movie is continuing the continuity established in Godzilla 1985 and continued in 1989's Godzilla vs. Biollante. Now, the film is once again written and directed by Kazuki Omori, who directed the previous film. Now, this movie features the return of King Ghidorah, who is arguably Godzilla's greatest adversary. Now, since this movie is in a different continuity than the Showa Godzilla films, this movie changes King Ghidorah's origin. Now, in the original series, King Ghidorah was an alien, but in this movie, King Ghidorah is a creature created by time travel. Now, I know Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is a fan favorite, and I do like this one a lot, but I do consider this one to be slightly overrated. One of my problems with this movie is really just comparing it to the first two films of the Heisei series, where the first two Heisei Godzilla films were very dark and very horror-oriented. This one is actually pretty silly and pretty campy, and I know that was kind of Toho's intention. They wanted to do a Godzilla film that was a lot lighter in tone than the first two Heisei Godzilla films. Like, they were trying to appeal a little more to children with this one, but that's the thing. This series basically fell into the same trap as the Showa series, where it started out really serious, but ultimately got kind of goofy. Now, I do like the sillier, campier Godzilla films, but coming right after The Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biollante, two of the darkest Godzilla films since the original, I would have liked to have seen them continue the dark tone of the those movies. Also, there are a lot of plot holes in this movie that are never properly addressed in this film or its follow-ups. And yes, I know, it's a time travel film, and plot holes are kind of inherent in the time travel genre, but some of the plot holes in this movie are particularly gaping. Now, with that being said, I do like this movie. It sounds like I'm bashing it, but I do actually really like this movie. I just think fans have a tendency to kind of overpraise this one. Now, while the tone of this movie is much lighter than the previous two films, this movie, like the previous two films and like the original Godzilla, is very, very politically charged and was even kind of controversial here in the States. This movie was also clearly influenced by other movies outside of the Godzilla franchise, like Back to the Future, The Terminator, and even a little bit of Gremlins. And Star Trek 2, I did see a bit of a Star Trek influence on this movie. Now, what the plot of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is it's set some time after the events of Godzilla vs. Biollante. Godzilla has not really been seen since his battle with Biollante at the end of that film, but it is confirmed that he's still alive, so Japan is trying to stay prepared for whenever his next attack is going to be. But a UFO appears over Japan and lands by Mount Fuji. This this UFO is soon revealed to actually be a time machine from the 23rd century. And these people from the future claim that they're trying to prevent a catastrophic event caused by Godzilla that will not just cripple Japan as a nation, but will also render the country uninhabitable. Now, in the movie, you start following this author who's trying to write a book about Godzilla, and he's interviewing these veterans from World War II who claim that during the war they were stationed on one of the Marshall Islands, and their garrison was saved from American soldiers by a dinosaur. 
Now, this island that they were on was one of the islands affected by the Castle Bravo nuclear test conducted by the United States in 1954. So this author concludes that this dinosaur that these soldiers saw was actually the dinosaur that was later mutated into Godzilla. So what the plan is to go back in time and remove this dinosaur before the United States tests the hydrogen bomb that mutates it into Godzilla, basically erasing Godzilla from history. But it turns out these people from the future had ulterior motives, and when they went back in time, they brought with them these three cute little creatures that they called the Dorats, and they left them on the island. That way, when the nuclear test is conducted, they get mutated into a giant three-headed dragon called King Ghidorah. Basically, these people from the future just replaced Godzilla with King Ghidorah, a monster that they could control. So, now Japan's only hope is to somehow recreate Godzilla so this new Godzilla could stop King Ghidorah. Now, I really liked the character of Terasawa, played by Kozuki Toyohara. I'm probably not saying the actor's last name right. I gravitate towards any character that's a writer, and there's a really funny scene in the movie involving this character where he asks the character of Emmy, who's one of the people from the future, hey, did my book become a bestseller? And she says, actually, hardly anybody knew about your book, and just the look of disappointment on his face is just, it's freaking priceless. Makumi Odaka reprises her role as Miki Sagusa from the previous film. Anna Nakagawa is also really good as the character of Emi, a woman of Japanese descent from the future who, in the beginning of the film, is on the villain's side, but when she realizes that they're going too far, she turns against them. Then you have American-born actor Robert Scott Field as the android M11, who is clearly supposed to be based on, like, the Terminator, but I also saw an influence of the character of Data from Star Trek The Next Generation on this character. Now, this character starts out as a villain, but is then reprogrammed to be a good guy. Katsuhiko Suzaki plays the character of Professor Mizaki. Now, this actor is no stranger to Godzilla. He actually played one of the main characters of Godzilla vs. Megalon, and played a different character in Terror of Mechagodzilla. Actually, several actors from the Showa era show up in this, like Kenji Sahara has a small role in the movie. Yoshio Tsuchiya plays the character character of Shindo. Now, I've mentioned this actor several times in my other Godzilla reviews, but I kept mispronouncing his name. I kept calling him Yashio Sucha, but I'm pretty sure the first way I said his name is the proper way to say it. But Shindo is a very interesting character, probably the most interesting character in the movie, to be honest. He was the colonel of the garrison that was saved by the dinosaur that was later mutated into Godzilla, and there's a really heartbreaking moment between him and Godzilla at one point that I won't give away. Now, the villains of the movie are kind of over-the-top and silly. Granted, I've only seen the English dub of this movie that Sony put out in the late 90s. I don't know if maybe I saw it in its original Japanese language with the English subtitles. Maybe I would be able to take the villains a little more seriously, but at least in the version of the film I saw, the villains are kind of goofy. Now, what the special effects in the movie, for the most part, is really good, and both Godzilla and King Ghidorah look great in the film. Now, what King Ghidorah's design in the movie, for the most part, is pretty true to his Shoha counterpart, except they alter the heads a little bit. I also thought the characterization of Godzilla and King Ghidorah in this movie was really interesting, where you find out that Godzilla was this innocent creature that only attacked when threatened, and it was basically mutated into this horrible monster by the atomic bomb. And similarly, King Ghidorah was just these three innocent little creatures mutated into this monstrosity by the bomb. And that's actually why I said the film seems to have a bit of a gremlins influence. The fact that King Ghidorah started out as the Dorats, it reminded me a little bit of like the Mogwais from Gremlins.
And the movie is also kind of a rumination on how, throughout the franchise, Godzilla has been both the villain and the hero of these movies. And in this movie, you see him start out as the villain, but ultimately become an anti-hero, only to become the villain again by the end of the movie. And you kind of see the same thing with King Ghidorah, where he starts off as the villain, but ultimately gets killed by Godzilla, and then the human characters bring him back as a cyborg called Mecha King Ghidorah. Uh, and he basically becomes an anti-hero by the end of the film. Now, while this movie does have a lot of goofy stuff in it, it is actually a very politically charged movie, and was actually kind of controversial here in America, with some people even accusing the film of being anti-American. Like, in the movie, you find out that the reason these people from the future want to destroy Japan is because, apparently, in the future, Japan becomes the world's greatest superpower. So, it's a very patriotic film, patriotic for Japan, but here's the thing. It's a Japanese movie, so why wouldn't a Japanese movie be pro-Japan? But also, a lot of the accusations of this film being anti-American comes from the scenes in this movie that take place during World War II. Like, in those scenes, you have Shindo giving this really impassioned speech to his garrison about how we'll beat the Americans and we'll show the Americans how strong we are, but here's the thing. Those scenes take place during World War II. That is exactly the kind of speech an actual Japanese colonel or general would be given his men. But you do have a scene where the dinosaur that will later be mutated into Godzilla is killing these American soldiers, and some people have interpreted that as being anti-American. I can almost see where people are coming from with that, but I don't personally believe there was anything anti-American really intended with this movie. Now, the American soldiers in that scene are kind of portrayed as being buffoons, but I think that's more so due to the fact that they were not very good actors at all. Now, I heard that a lot of them were actual American soldiers from a military base, and apparently they were more than happy to be crushed by Godzilla. Like, Really, I just think it's a film that's meant to empower Japan, because Japan did lose so much at the end of World War II. Yes, you could argue that they were kind of the instigators of that, because back during the war, they were a very totalitarian and very imperialistic country, but they still suffered a lot at the end of the war, and I don't think there's anything wrong with a Japanese movie that's meant to empower Japan. Again, it's a Japanese movie. It would be one thing if this was an American movie and it had that same message, but it is a Japanese movie. Now, what my main issue with the movie is really just the plot holes. Like, they go back in time and apparently erase Godzilla from history, but here's the thing. The Godzilla who showed up in The Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biollante is technically not the same creature as the Godzilla who showed up in the original 1954 film. It's just another creature of the same species. But was this dinosaur that saved these men during World War II, was this the Godzilla from the 1954 film, or was this only the Godzilla from Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biollante? Apparently that actually is addressed in the original Japanese version of this movie, but it's not addressed in the English dub. But if this movie is erasing the events of The Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biollante from this series timeline, I think it would have been cool if they touched on maybe a character who was killed by Godzilla during those events who is now alive because they erased those events from history, but the movie never does anything like that. And also, the Godzilla movies that came after this that are still in the same continuity as this do reference the events of Godzilla 84 and Godzilla versus Biollante, so it's like, what, did the timeline get fixed after the events of this movie? Again, there are plot holes that are never really addressed. And yes, I know that's technically the fault of the movies that came after this, not really the fault of this as a standalone film, but I also don't really like the idea that they erased Godzilla 84 and Godzilla vs. Biollante from existence, because those were two better Godzilla movies, in my opinion. Now, I know it sounds like I'm really bad 
trash in this movie, and I'm trying not to because I do think this is a good movie, I just think it's fundamentally flawed. Now, the one thing about this movie that definitely is not flawed is Akira Ifakube returning to the series to do the score. And he definitely uses some of his classic Godzilla themes, but combines that with new themes for the film. Now, returning to these Godzilla reviews is my friend Christian Feliciano, so here is him giving his thoughts on Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah is one of my favorite villains, as I mentioned before in the other reviews. And my biggest problem with this movie is that it changes the origin of King Ghidorah. In the original films, he is an alien. He comes from outer space, he arrives in a meteor. In this film... He is, I mean, they do some whole convoluted plot thing here with time travel, where they go back in time to erase Godzilla, but then the creature that they have, you know, they mutate and then they become King Ghidorah, and it's just a whole giant mess of whatever when it comes to the time travel stuff. And don't get me wrong, they do a good job of it, it's just that for me... Uh, you know, I, I like the original version of just King Ghidorah comes from outer space and there you go, that's the end of it. Like, I don't know why they had to confuse it all and, and try to make it more serious or, or whatever they were trying to do, I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I, I just prefer the original origin story of King Ghidorah and the original, you know, ver version of Godzilla, all this stuff that, it's, it's cool, you, you know, you make him evil and then, you know, he turns good throughout the series and then... You know, he fights King Ghidorah like that to me was cool how that happened and Mothra You know got them got him to fight Ghidorah like that to me was was cool. I didn't need to Redo the whole origin story. Um, but I get it. This is the reboot series. I never saw the reboot Godzilla movie um, That came out in the 80s. I never saw that one and I never saw the sequel to that one this is the one that I saw from that era, and I've seen the others from this era, but I just never saw those first two films. And maybe that's why I was so confused as a kid. Just I didn't understand what was going on, and I still don't understand why they decided to change the origin of that. But it is a good film, and if you're looking for a more serious Godzilla compared to the 60s ones or the 70s ones... This one it will definitely be for you, especially if you're a fan of King Ghidorah or if you just want to jump on to Godzilla and you don't want to go through that all that other stuff. This is a good jump on point. You could jump on here and watch the other ones from this era and you'll enjoy it just the same. Uh, and probably even more, depending on how you feel, you know, about, like I said, the seriousness of it. And, um, yeah, that's, you know, I'll recommend it for everybody. I'm recommending it for people who love Godzilla, people who are interested in Godzilla, people who have never seen Godzilla, but are willing to watch it, you know, and you want to see it. You've always been interested, but, you know, you just haven't watched Godzilla until maybe the new ones or something like that. Definitely check this one out. You'll enjoy it to death. Um, the only complaints I have is just from my own bias opinion, because, of course, I am such a fan of... Of the original Godzillas that it you know obviously pollutes my review of this one a little bit I'm not saying it's bad I'm just saying that it pollutes just a little bit where I don't praise it as much as I would if I didn't have that biased feeling you know towards the original and uh, yeah uh, thank you so much bye bye I hope you enjoyed Christian's take on this movie, and that was my review on Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, and bye.